Hey folks, what I've got here is a Russian Mountain FSB Special Forces single meal ration, and we're going to check it out right now on Kitbashed Survival. All right, so this was made in 2020. Looks like it was packed on May 25th, 2020. And I got this in early 2021, and it's kind of been in the queue to review. And then, of course, all the stuff with Russia and Ukraine went down earlier this year. And so I was kind of holding on it, didn't really know what to do. But I want to go ahead and review it because it expired in March, on March 25th. So I want to get into it and review it before it really goes bad. It's probably still okay, but we'll find out. And as far as the Russia and Ukraine thing goes, you know, I have my opinions on it, but this thing is not about politics. This is just a military ration, and that's how I see it. It's not about politics at all. So, let's get into it. Now, I'm not going to bother translating all of this stuff on the front. It would take me forever. I believe this is menu number three, which, according to the chart here, I think that means it's got about 1,300 calories or just over 5,400 kilojoules and the gross weight is 0.75 kilograms. And I think down here it says to store it between a temperature of 0 and 20 Celsius and humidity of no more than 75 percent. So let's crack the seal. Hopefully it's still good. You never know when you order these Russian MREs. <laughs> I've had a lot of them that show up with ruptured contents, stuff spilled all over the place. I've had one arrive with maggots, so you got to be really careful when you're buying these things. All right. So let me do a quick inspection to see everything's looking okay. Here's the main dish, and I don't see any leakage. That's good. That's really good. Okay, so we've got our crackers, hard tack, if you will. Got some tea. We've got, I think this is jelly. I'll translate it in a minute. Got our wet wipes, portable stove, vegetable caviar, and then this is the main course. Looks like there's a cow and some buckwheat or barley. So it's either barley and beef or buckwheat and beef. Yeah, Google says it's barley and beef. And then we've got some coffee. Sugar, spoon, napkin, salt, pepper. I'm not sure what this is. I guess this might be for. <laughs> what is this? Is it a can opener or. I don't know what this is. Hang on a minute. Maybe this will tell us what it is. Yeah, okay, this is a can opener. That's what it is. Got some information. I'll translate that in a moment. And, and we got some more information right here, which I'll translate in just a moment. So there we go. Everything's in good shape. I'm happy. Now it's just a matter of whether it's still good on the inside. All right, so here's everything. And by the way, that's apple jelly. Now, it came with this little card that has some instructions on it, but oddly enough, some of the instructions are for the larger 24-hour ration, which this is not. So it's got instructions for using the water purification tablets, for example, which don't exist in this single ration. Kind of interesting. Anyway, I'm going to heat up some water for the coffee, and we'll also get the barley with beef going. Now, normally, I would just use my camping stove to heat this up because I like to save these tablets and the portable stoves for survival kits. But 
just for this time, I'm going to use the portable stove. any matches in here I wonder is that the match surface there let's find out now you can pull this tab to open it but they give you this can opener I'm not exactly sure why they do that but maybe you're supposed to use this to open it rather than doing the pull tab I don't know but I'm just gonna use the pull tab someone wants to comment in the comment section on the use of the can opener tool, feel free. All right, so there's the striker surface. Let's see if this works. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's very cool. Don't have to worry about matches when you got the match built into the fuel. Very cool. Get that going. good all right I usually prefer the camping stove just because it's a little less <laughs> messy and dangerous, but uh, we'll see how this does. And we got some sizzling going on. Might add a little water. That way it'll make it a little easier to stir around and a little less likely to burn. Okay, I'm back for take two of cooking the barley and beef. That was kind of a disaster. You know, I'm filming this in the morning and I had not had my coffee yet and I just wasn't thinking clearly and I put the portable stove on a plastic tray and you can kind of take it from there and guess what happened. So I'm not going to use the portable stove. We're going to go back to my camping stove and a pot. And when I was cleaning that up, I spilt the coffee. That went everywhere. You can probably see some coffee back here. Uh, fortunately, I had an identical pack of coffee in my reserves. So I've got the coffee back. The barley and beef is now in a pot. And so we'll continue cooking it. And we'll just pretend like that never happened. Now, I could have cut that out and tried to cover up the mistake, but I don't believe in that. I make mistakes just like everybody else, so there you have it. So be careful when you're using a portable stove inside. <laughs> Kids don't try that at home. Looks a lot like the Belarus combat ration barley and beef. Probably made in the same factory. Okay, that should be good. I thought I had misplaced the green spoon in my cleanup efforts, so I brought in a backup MRE spoon, but then I found the green spoon. It was in the pot with the barley and beef, so all good there. Okay. <laughs> that was an adventure. So there's the barley and beef. It survived in one piece. Yeah, that's good. Let's try it with some hot sauce. 
The Belarus barley and beef was better with hot sauce, so I'm willing to bet this will be as well. Yeah, that's why I shy away from using the portable stove inside. It's just a pain in the butt, especially when you're an idiot like I was and you put it on a plastic tray. <laughs> I know better than that. I just wasn't thinking. All right. Barley and beef with hot sauce. Oh, yeah. It's great stuff. Nice tender beef. Big pieces of barley in there, as you can see. Fantastic. All right, let's try some of this apple jelly on a cracker. Not a big fan of these Russian MRE crackers. They're kind of hard and flavorless. It's kind of like hardtack. So I've never been a huge fan of them, but on the plus side, they do last forever. All right. There's our apple jelly, apple jam. Yeah, that's good. Again, if there's a weak spot, it's these crackers. They're just so hard and flavorless. But the jelly's good. Let's wash that down with some coffee. Mm hmm That's good. For some reason, it's not quite as good as the coffee that's in the Belarus 24-hour combat ration. That coffee was a little smoother, but it also had some sweetened condensed milk to go with it, so that's going to make it better any day. So, I wouldn't say it's the best coffee I've ever had, but it's okay. My girlfriend's kind of a coffee enthusiast, so let's see what she has to say about this. Okay, Lisa's going to try the Russian coffee. Mm. <laughs> How is it? So let's go to Starbucks. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it bitter, acidic, anything? It's just kind of weak. <laughs> yeah. It's coffee. <laughs> Better than nothing if you're out in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I drink it. I mean. <laughs> but it's not the best coffee ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right, now let's try this vegetable caviar. And I'm not especially looking forward to this. I think I've tried this before and it, it was okay. It's kind of weird. It's just like, it's like baby food. So yeah, it's just kind of like pureed vegetables. Like I said, it looks like baby food, but let's give it a try. Well, it tastes better than it looks. There's a sweetness to it. You can definitely taste the vegetables. Some eggplant, I'm getting some eggplant and carrot. It gets better the more you have. It's okay. It's not bad. Definitely the star of the show is the barley and beef. Yeah. And if you have some hot sauce around and you're a hot sauce person, that's definitely the way to do this. I've got salt and pepper in here, but in my opinion, this stuff doesn't really need it. Okay, I've just about finished everything up, but I did want to try the tea because while the coffee wasn't the best I've ever had, I'm willing to bet the tea is going to be pretty darn good because, of course, Russians are known for their tea. They love tea. So, wait for this water to heat up and we'll give it a go. I will probably use the sugar in the tea. I don't put sugar in my coffee, but I do like some sugar in my tea. I like cream in my tea if I have it, but there is none here. Okay.
Okay, we'll let that steep for a few minutes and then we'll give it a try. All right. A rich amber hue. Yeah, the tea is much better than the coffee, in my opinion. This is good tea. Yeah, very good tea. All right, so there you have it. I'm gonna finish my tea off camera, but let me know what you think in the comments below. For now, that's it. I'm Eric Siegel. This is Kitbashed Survival. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.